Okay, in this lesson, we are going to be looking at two column proofs having to do with geometry, angles, etc. Um, if you were in court, you'd, if you were asked to prove something, you would take the ev evidence that you're given. So what we're going to be doing in proofs is we're going to be given some evidence. And you would also be, if you're in court or uh, otherwise, you'd be asked to prove something or to show something. So what we're going to do is lead from some evidence that we're given to follow that through. And there might be some steps in between uh, <clears throat> in order to find out and to prove what we're asked to prove. So here's some helpful hints. If you go to the bottom of your page, <clears throat> helpful hints for proofs. Uh, the first helpful hint is this, that your first statements should be the evidence that you are given. And that's always the case. Same thing if you're going to court. You're first of all going to state all the evidence that's given. Okay. Uh, next thing would be that the last statement must be what you're asked to prove. And that makes sense as well. Even if you're in a court case, for example, your last statement would be, therefore, this is true. So whatever the last statement is, is what you're asked to be improved. And the middle steps is helpful hint number three. We are going to add evidence and statements to the proof as you go, okay? And particular to geometry proofs, you're gonna not only add the evidence to the reasoning, but you're also gonna add the evidence to the diagram as you go, because this is such a visual chapter. Uh, these take a little bit of thinking through. This first one actually guides you. It gives you the statements first. It guides you to the proof, and the second one doesn't. And as you practice these, you're gonna find them probably difficult initially, uh, but they've promised that they do get easier. So, here's the first diagram. You can see right here in the top left-hand corner. And here's the evidence that we're given. So this is stuff that we already know. We are given the fact that EC is equal to ED. So if you look here, here's kind of uh, where I'm putting the red box around. This is kind of the list of items to get us to what we're being asked to prove. So as you can see, the first two things are the evidence that we're given. And as I stated in the helpful hints, you always state what you're given first. So we're given that EC is equal to ED. And the reason, you want to give a reason for every every property that you're given, uh, you want to give a reason, and the reason there is that that's evidence is given to us. You're also going to want to add that to the diagram. So EC equaling to ED visually means this, that I'm going to put a line on each one. Okay. Uh, next, we're stating that ECD is equivalent to angle ABF. ECD and ABF are equivalent. That is given to us. That's evidence that's given to us. As far as what that means on the diagram is this. Angle ABF, which is this angle here, and ECD are equivalent to each other. Okay? <clears throat> next. Now it's going to actually guide us. And for, we're given the statements. In the next example, we're going to have to come up with the statements to get us to the proof. We are being asked to prove that uh, BF is parallel to DE. So we are being asked to prove that these two lines here, which we don't know yet, that these two lines are parallel. Okay? We don't actually know that yet. So these two green lines we're being asked to prove are parallel. So the next statement that we are going to make is that angle ECD is equivalent to angle EDC. So in other words, these two angles here, angle ECD is equivalent to angle EDC. Now why would we know that? And you may want to think to yourself of any properties that you know why we're allowed to state that. We cannot say that the reason we know that is because it's given, because that is not given. And here's the reason. The reason is that this triangle here that I'm just outlining in red is an isosceles triangle because the two sides are equal. And we learn in the properties at the beginning of this chapter that angles opposite equal sides are equal in a, an isosceles triangle. So because these two sides are equal, those two angles must be equal. So the reason these are equal, and now I can add it to the diagram, is because angles opposite equal sides are equal to each other. Next, <clears throat> uh, it says here that angle EDC is equivalent to angle ABF. So if you look carefully here, this diagram maybe should be a little bit bigger, but what this is stating is that these two angles that are in orange at the moment, those two angles are equivalent to each other. Now at this moment, we don't know that they're equivalent to each other, but here's the thinking. <clears throat> If angle ABF, maybe I'll write it out here, if angle ABF is equivalent to 
angle ECD and angle EDC is also equivalent to angle ECD, they must also be equal to each other. So as you'll notice here, uh, this angle that my circle is uh, kind of hovering above, if this angle is equivalent to angle ECD, these, if these two blue angles are equal, and the two red angles are equal, then this blue angle, which is angle ABF, right here, must be equivalent to this red angle, which is angle EDC, because they're both equivalent to angle ECD. That's actually called the transitive property, but the idea is written here. If ABF is equivalent to ECD and EDC is also equivalent to ECD, they must be equivalent to each other. So what that's actually called, and I'll uh, define this in a little bit. That's called the transitive property. Or I'll put in brackets um, because both are equal to angle ECD. That's kind of the idea there. Okay, so I'll just erase this. And let's just define, if you go to the bottom of the page again, let's just define the transitive property because that's sometimes used throughout these proofs. <clears throat> the transitive property states this. If A is equal to B, and A is also equal to C, then what that means is that B and C must be equal. Okay. So in other words, if two things are equal to the same thing, kind of an interesting idea, uh, they must be equal to each other. Okay, uh, so here's what we just proved. We just proved that these two orange angles, which I'm putting three lines on, and this is a little bit messy at the moment, but these two orange angles are equal. And finally, because those two orange angles are equal, which now I'll highlight in yellow, so here's yellow angles, you can now state that those two lines are parallel and the reason for that is that these are now corresponding angles okay so why are these two lines parallel BF and DE it's because the corresponding angles are equal okay so a little bit tricky but the big idea is you have to state what you're given and you have to somehow add evidence from some of the properties that we know to the diagram and have reasonings for them until you can get to the proof. So let's look at the next one and that will be it for this lesson. You may want to pause this throughout, rewind and kind of think about these things to yourself as well. Uh, so first one it says we are given that triangle cat is an isosceles triangle. So I'm going to write here <clears throat> Triangle cat is isosceles. And the reason for that, why am I allowed to state that? Well, pretty simply here, it's a given piece of evidence. So on the diagram, what that means is that these two sides, CA and CT, are equivalent. Next, it says that angle cat is 70 degrees. Why am I allowed to say that? Well, because it's given to me. So angle cat is this angle right here. This is 70 degrees. Next, we're given that angle CED is equivalent to 70 degrees. Why am I allowed to say that? Because it's given. So CED is this angle right here. And finally, we are given that angle EDF is equivalent to angle BFD, and they're both equivalent to 35 degrees. And I'm allowed to say that because that is given. So EDF and BFD, which are these two angles here, these are each 35 degrees. Okay? So add evidence as you're given the evidence. Now here's what we're being asked to show, which we don't know at the moment yet. We're being asked to show that AT, this line segment here, is parallel to BF. Okay? So, we don't know that yet. Uh, let's just find out some things that we do know. Uh, we know, for example, <clears throat> that since these two 35 degree angles are equal, we know that this line segment here, highlighted in pink, and this line segment here, so DE and BF, are parallel to each other because we have alternate interior angles. You might see the Z there. So I can state because the two 35 degree angles are equal, I can state that DE is parallel to BF. Okay? 
And why is that? Because the alternate interior angles are equal. Those are the 35 degree angles. Okay, so that I'm allowed to say. And as I say things, I would like to add them to the diagram because that's important. So I'm going to draw an arrow here and an arrow here. So we know at the moment that those are parallel to each other. <clears throat> Next, uh, I can state, since this is an isosceles triangle, I can state that this angle down here, which I now have in orange, is also 70 degrees because this triangle is isosceles and the angles opposite these equal sides have to be equal to each other. So next I'm going to state that angle ATC is equivalent to 70 degrees. And that's because angles opposite equal sides are equal. Okay, so I'd like to leave that at the diagram. So I just added here that this is a 70 degree angle. So at this particular moment, what you might notice or you might not notice, I'll highlight in blue, you might notice that these two angles are equal to each other, which means that these two line segments, which I'm now highlighting in blue, those are parallel to each other because those 70 degree angles are corresponding. So <clears throat> line segment DE has to be parallel to line segment AT. And that's because the corresponding angles are equal to each other. Those are the 70 degree angles. Okay, what that means on the diagram, and again, you may want to pause this and rewind and think about it and ask questions in class. Uh, but what that does mean is that these two, ang these two sides, so AT and DE, are parallel to each other. And here's what you might notice. And this is, again, this doesn't always come up, but I wanted to show it to you. The transitive property is coming up again. What you'll notice is that both of these angles, BF and AT, I just highlighted in yellow and I'm hovering over, or sorry, those are sides. Side BF and side AT are both parallel to side DE. We just proved that. So guess what? If BF is parallel to DE and AT is parallel to DE, guess what? They're parallel to each other. So we now know that AT is parallel to BF which you might notice is what we're being asked to prove. So because of the evidence that's in front of us, those are parallel to each other. And again, that's called the transitive property. Or I can put in brackets here if I like to. Uh, they are both parallel to DE, which means they must be parallel to each other. And that's what we were asked to prove. Again, ask lots of questions. This is a tricky, tricky section.